When you become lucid, you wake up to the illusion and you see that what seemed to be a solid, relatively existing reality is in fact an illusory projection of your own mind. So once you've had a lucid dream, just one lucid dream, the next time you hear these Buddhists and these other spiritual masters and spiritual traditions talking about this concept, that perhaps this is a dreamlike illusion, uh, kind of a shared dream, it becomes much more accessible to, to believe that or at least to kind of uh, see it as a possibility. But of course in Buddhism there's always relative and absolute. So on an uh, absolute level, yes, this is a dreamlike illusion, empathy for no existence, but on a relative level, bills need to be paid, this feels real, this feels solid, we're having a conversation now. So we need both an awareness of the absolute, but an interaction with the relative. So, it's no point going, oh, I'm not going to turn up at work because this is all a dreamlike illusion. Um, I can't be bothered to help you because this is all a dreamlike illusion. Rubbish. If this is a dreamlike illusion and I truly accept it, then I want to help you because you are my dream and I have manifested you into existence. And because of that, you deserve as much love as I'm willing to give myself. So, strangely, if we were to truly accept this is a dreamlike illusion, empty of inherent existence, we would engage it even more. We would be more compassionate, more loving, more insightful in our interaction with others, not less. So I think people sometimes confuse that something nihilistic. Oh, it's all a dream, so don't bother. No, it's all a dream. So get lucid in this dream. Can you explain um, about... I need to show love to everything, that showing love to myself, compassion and acceptance, all this kind of stuff. So I was running around this lucid dream, hugging everything. And I run up to this guy and I go and hug him. And as I'm running over to him, I knock over a chair in the lucid dream. And I turn around and I suddenly have this outpouring of compassion towards the chair. I was like, oh God, the chair's me and I knocked it over. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I pick up this chair and I dust it down. And I was like, yeah. And I hug the chair. And I'm hugging the chair thinking, oh, I'm losing the plot here. You know, too much lucid dreaming. And then I thought, no, this is correct. You know, if I'm accepting that all of the people populating my lucid dreams are me, then the inanimate objects are me too. And if we're going to follow this sort of logical conclusion, if I'm showing love and compassion to the animate things in my dreams, I should thereby also show love and compassion to the inanimate things in my dreams. And the weird thing is, since that dream, I have never stacked a chair in the same way since. Just in case. And in fact, I've seen or got some sort of inkling that perhaps there is awareness even in animate objects. And that, you know, just because it's a chair doesn't mean we can like, you know, stack it really roughly and kind of be really unmindful with it. Because if this is a dreamlike illusion, then that chair does contain some of my consciousness, some of my awareness. And so we should pay homage to that and engage life with a little bit more gentleness, a little bit more mindfulness, a little bit more kindness for both the animate dream characters which we share this world with and the inanimate ones like a chair.